Hello students, welcome to Biosmart Academy. In today's lecture, we were going to discuss about the monosaccharide derivatives. Okay, monosaccharide derivatives. And remember, this is the last lecture of the monosaccharide. Last lecture of the monosaccharide. Before this, I already taught you two lectures on monosaccharide. I hope that you watch these two lectures. If you not watch these two lectures, then please go and watch first these two lectures. Then came here to watch the lecture on monosaccharide derivatives. In the previous two lectures, I mainly deal with or I mainly taught very important topics, which is very, very important from examination point of view, very important topic of the monosaccharide. And you will definitely get question from these two videos that I already taught in my previous lectures. So, today we are going to discuss about the monosaccharide derivatives. Okay. So, let's start today's lecture. So, first derivative that, are, that we are going to discuss is glycosides. So, first of all, you should know that what is glycoside. Okay. What is glycoside? See, in my previous lecture, I discuss you about hemiacetal. About hemiacetal and i told you that what is hemiacetal okay what is hemiacetal so basically i just want to repeat it here because it deals with the glycoside as well okay so basically when aldehyde so this is aldehyde react with alcohol react with alcohol okay when aldehyde react with alcohol then it forms hemiacetal okay this is a structure of hemiacetal then it forms hemiacetal so when aldehyde react with alcohol then it forms hemiacetal it forms hemiacetal okay so how aldehyde can react with alcohol and how then it forms hemiacetal okay in the previous lecture i explained all these things okay but also i want to explain you here in with the help of this beautiful structure Okay, I also shown you this structure in my previous lecture as well. See, if you look at this linear structure of glucose, here uh, in highlighted, uh, you can see that the carbon 1 is aldehyde group and this carbon 5 present is alcohol group. That is hydroxyl group is present, that is OH group. So, if I rotate this structure and I put it into a ring-like structure, that is Haworth formula, I uh, rotate this structure and it become a ring like structure. Okay, this ring like structure. Then what happened? Then this C5 hydroxyl group and aldehyde group came close to each other. Came close to each other. Okay, then in this case, hemiacetal is formed. Hemiacetal is formed. So this is about the hemiacetal structure. I hope that you get the concept again about the hemiacetal. Now, so this is hemiacetal. Now, when this hemiacetal, okay, when this hemiacetal, when this hemiacetal again react with alcohol, again react with alcohol, means what? Again react with alcohol, that is OH group, then what happened then water molecule is released that is h2o release and with the release of h2o uh, acetyl group is formed a uh, acetyl group is formed what is this acetyl group this is basically this acetyl group okay this acetyl group is formed so this is acetyl group okay this is acetyl group so when again this hemiacetal react with alcohol then acetyl group is formed and this acetyl is basically known as glycosides and this acetyl is known as glycosides clear so this is the derivative of the monosaccharide first derivative of monosaccharide so when hemiacetal of the sugar react with alcohol then it form acetyl with the release of h2o with the release of h2o and this is known as glycosides. This is known as glycosides. So, I hope that you get the concept of glycosides clear here. Okay. So, basically, oh, glycoside is formed by the condensation. What is this condensation? That is the release of water molecule. So, glycoside 
is basically formed by the condensation between the hydroxyl group of the anomeric carbon that is C1 carbon and a second compound that may or may not be monosaccharide that may be alcohol okay or any other compound so this is glycosides i hope that you get the concept of glycoside clear so this is the first derivative of monosaccharide okay next just now look at this figure so i discuss all these things so when aldehyde first react with alcohol then it form hemiacetyl and when hemiacetyl again react with alcohol then it form acetyl with the release of the water molecule and this acetyl is known as glycosides this acetyl is known as glycosides and this is the first derivative of the monosaccharide so this is all about the glycosides clear next Another thing is that if the hemiacetyl portion is glucose, suppose the hemiacetyl sugar is glucose, then the resulting compound that will going to form is glucoside. From glycoside, it will be also IDE. The last three letter will be IDE. Okay. And if the hemiacetyl sugar is galactose, then the resulting compound that will going to be formed is galactoside. If gal galactoside. So if the hemiacetyl portion is glucose, then the resulting compound is glucoside and the hemi if the hemiacetyl portion is galactose then the resulting compound is galactoside so this is the concept okay a very common example of glycoside is wabin a very common example of glycoside is wabin i just put it in a highlighter because this may be common examination okay so wabin is a example of glycoside so it may be asked in the examination that which one of the following is an example of glycoside? So, the answer will be wabin. Okay, clear? Next. This is a second derivative that is sugar acid. That is sugar acid. So, what is this sugar acid? Okay. So, basically, if you take the concept, okay, see, we all know the ring structure or the linear structure of glucose. Okay, this is a linear structure of glucose that I drawn here. Okay, that I drawn here basically. OH, H, then again carbon, again carbon. Okay, again carbon. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is 6th carbon. Okay, this is again H, OH and this is again H, OH. So, this is a linear structure of glucose. Okay, now. So, this is the linear structure of glucose okay ch2h okay so this is the linear structure of glucose okay so what is sugar acid now just focus on this linear structure of glucose okay then you will get a clear idea about the sugar acid okay now the aldehyde group that is present in this linear structure of glucose glucose it basically oxidized it basically what oxida oxidized okay so when this aldehyde group is oxidized that is oxidized and it produced a class of monosaccharide which is basically known as aldonic acid which is basically known as aldonic acid aldonic acid okay aldonic acid clear so basically in this linear structure of glucose if this aldehyde group is basically oxidized okay if this aldehyde group is basically oxidized then what happened aldonic acid is formed Okay, because we know that when aldehyde is basically oxidized, see this is aldehyde and when it is basically oxidized, is from what? Carboxylic acid, COH. This is a simple concept that when aldehyde is oxidized, then it form carboxylic acid, that is COOH. So, if the molecule is glucose and if the aldehyde group is oxidized this is the oxidation occur in the aldehyde group then it is known as what glucose is converted into gluconic acid glucose is converted into gluconic acid so this is a sugar acid okay now just first look at this figure see this is a common structure of glucose where, where cho group is present clear this is a common structure of glucose now if this aldehyde group is oxidized then what happened then it from cooh as we know that aldehyde when become oxidized it become acid so it becomes cooh as it is glucose so it become what d-gluconic acid d-gluconic acid clear so this is the one kind of sugar and it may also happen 
the oxidation is takes place at the terminal carbon here so if the oxidation is takes place at the terminal carbon suppose in this carbon okay then what happen then it form d glucuronic acid d glucuronic acid okay and finally if the oxidation is occur on both the aldehyde group that is c1 carbon and the terminal carbon here you can see coh and coh in this case what happened both the first carbon and the terminal carbon both get oxidized so in this case d glucuric acid is formed okay d glucuric acid is formed so these are basically what these are basically sugar acid which is a derivative of monosaccharide which is a derivative of monosaccharide and this is basically a derivatives of glucose molecule these are basically derivatives of glucose molecule in the first case c1 carbon is oxidized in the second case terminal carbon is oxidized and in the last case both the first carbon and the last carbon get oxidized and according to them different names will be given so this is a derivative of the monosaccharide that is sugar acid okay so for example vitamin c okay so i hope that you get the concept clear about the sugar acid okay so this is the second derivative of the monosaccharide okay now the third derivative of the monosaccharide is sugar alcohol sugar alcohol so what does this sugar alcohol means so if you look at the structure of the sugar alcohol okay so in this case what happen in this case reduction occur okay that is addition of the hydrogen that is addition of the hydrogen reduction occur okay now if you look at the structure of glucose so this is a simple uh, linear structure of glucose okay this is a simple linear structure of glucose now if in place of the aldehyde if in place of the aldehyde a reduction occur then what happen then h is added and it become ch2oh and it become what sorbitol it become sorbitol that is hydroxyl that is form alcohol oh group is added so it form what alcohol from aldehyde to alcohol that is oh group is added how due to the addition of the hydrogen that is reduction occur so basically when uh, the when the carbonyl group in aldose and ketose can be reduced to hydroxyl group then it form sugar alcohol okay for example glucose is form sorbitol glucose is form sorbitol as you can see here the normal structure of glucose cho as we all know that aldehyde group is present as a functional group in normal structure of glucose but when it get reduced that is h plus when added then it become alcohol that is oh so it become sorbitol so this is nothing but a sugar alcohol that is reduction occur that is reduction occur and all the sugar alcohol is that is designated is designated by the addition of etol by the addition of etol either is sorbitol okay if um, xylose is basically uh, there then it is known as xylitol like that okay so this is the third derivative of monosaccharide that is sugar alcohol i hope that you get the concept here correctly if you have any doubt then please comment now this is the last and the final derivative of monosaccharide okay that is amino sugar now first look at this figure so what is amino sugar amino sugar now if you look at this ring structure of glucose you can find out that in this c2 carbon this is a c2 carbon okay in this c2 carbon hydroxyl group is present normally okay but if in the if in the place of hydroxyl group if we add amino group then what happen then it become glucosamine okay it become what glucosamine from d glucose from d glucose it become d glucosamine why it become d glucosamine because amino group is added because amino group is added so in case of amino sugar the hydroxyl group at c2 of the parent compound that is glucose compound is replaced okay is replaced that is hydroxyl group is basically replaced with the amino group okay so hydroxyl group hydroxyl group of the parent compound at the c2 carbon is replaced with the amino group at the same c2 carbon then it became 
then it become what then it become glucosamine then it become glucosamine for example in case of glucose as we have seen earlier okay and uh, this also uh, possible that an acetyl glucosamine also be added so in that case what an acetyl d glucosamine it become what an acetyl d glucosamine so this is the concept so if we look at the simple structure of glucose in the c2 carbon if hydroxyl group is replaced with amino group then it becomes d glucosamine so it is basically nothing but amino sugar but amino sugar okay it may be replaced by acetyl amino group and if it replaced by acetyl amino group then it become what then it become an acetyl beta d glucosamine okay an acetyl beta d glucose amine okay how it looks when it replaced with well, how it looks when it replaced with and as uh, how it looks when it replaced with acetyl amino group it looks like this okay just simple look at this structure uh, ring structure okay oh h okay just h so here acetyl amino group is like that okay i just draw it in yellow okay c double bond o and ch3 so this is the acetyl amino group addition of acetyl amino group and when this acetyl amino group is added then it form what then it form an acetyl an acetyl d glucose amine d glucose amine okay then it will form amino sugar okay so this is the concept so this is the final derivative of the monosaccharide okay so these are the four derivatives of monosaccharide that is glycosides sugar acids sugar alcohol and amino sugar if you have any doubt regarding to any of its regarding to any of its derivatives then you may comment okay and with this we end basically the first part of the carbohydrate lecture that is the monosaccharide okay and in the upcoming lectures we will going to start soon disaccharide we are going to start soon disaccharide okay till then thank you